Hi, yesterday I did a video, I actually did two videos, uh, posted one of them on YouTube and both of them on Facebook, but I was looking at the differences between how pro-lifers are understanding what late abortions are all about and what pro-choicers are believing when they think about late abortions. And I want you to think for a minute back to Ghostbusters. Remember that movie? Awesome movie. And remember the ad that the Ghostbusters did, are you troubled by spook spirits or specters, blah, 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 blah. And then the very last line of that ad was, we're ready to believe you. And that's an important thing, being ready to believe somebody. And we trust certain people and we are much, much more likely to believe what they tell us than we are to believe what somebody we don't trust is telling us. So let's start with that. Um, the pro-choicers are trusting the abortion lobby. These are people that they identify with, people that they've been working with for a long time. So naturally, they have a propensity to go into this trusting them, whereas we mistrust them. We're looking at everything they say through kind of a jaded lens. And things that pro-lifers say, we tend to believe because they're from our side and um, anything that pro... You know what I mean? So I wanted to give an example of pro-lifers believing something that just wasn't true in spite of it not passing the logic test simply because their side said it and it was a bad thing about the other side. And because it was a bad thing about the other side, they were ready to believe it. There was an abortion doctor, a woman who was scoffing about how, uh, about the silent scream and how unborn babies scream when they're being dismantled. And she said, that that was silly because I think her exact words were, I transect the cord, close quote, because then the baby can't scream. Now, transecting the cord is one of the methods of killing the baby prior to a later abortion. And it's the umbilical cord that they're talking about, where they transect the umbilical cord, the baby's no longer getting food, the baby's no longer getting oxygen, of course, the baby dies. And anybody who has read Martin Haskell's presentation paper for his DNX abortion that he presented at the Dallas National Abortion Federation meeting in 1992, which is where we found out about what pro-lifers dubbed partial birth abortion, he talks about the methods that many doctors use to kill the fetus before they start with the abortion, which are like intercardiac injections or transecting the cord, cutting the umbilical cord so that the baby suffocates. So that's obviously what she was talking about. First of all, because it's an established method. When an abortion practitioner says transect the cord, you automatically understand that that means you cut the umbilical cord the same way that we understand when you're in a car and somebody says floor it, they mean to push the gas pedal to the floor and go really fast. We have, there's no ambiguity when you're driving about what floor it means, and there's absolutely no ambiguity in abortion practice, what transecting the cord means. Okay. So basically what she was saying, and it's horrible. She was saying dead babies don't scream. Okay. And that in and of itself is horrible. Okay. You don't need to embellish it to make it even more horrible. But for some reason, a couple of pro-lifers took that to mean that she transcended the vocal cord. First of all, vocal cords. It's plural. So when she's saying transect the cord, obviously she's not talking about vocal cords simply because we speak of vocal cords in the plural. So there's another reason that obviously she's not talking about cutting the vocal cords. Also, even if it did scream in utero, nobody's going to hear it. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. So it doesn't pass the simple logic test to believe, like some of these people were believing, that this woman was so sadistic that she would reach into the uterus and fish around, following the ultrasound, find that baby's throat and cut the umbilical cord, I mean the vocal cords, so that it can't scream. This is an entirely nonsensical concept. The minute you give it any thought, it makes no sense. And the only reason pro-lifers were believing it is because they are already primed to believe any bad thing that they hear about somebody who does abortions. They're ready to believe it, so they hear it and they believe it, and they're also ready to trust other pro-lifers, so they say it and they believe it. And that's why it's really important to share your actual sources, okay? 
when I say that, um, oh, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. I say, um, oh, here we go. I point out that pro-choicers still very much admire Dr. Harvey Carman, even though he was involved in what was called the Mother's Day Massacre with Kermit Gosnell. He did a super coil thing in Bangladesh. Um, this guy did really horrible things. Um, and my saying that in spite of his horrible things, the pro-choice movement still adores him, I presented evidence of that. I linked to obituaries that were written by pro-choice sources or quoting pro-choice sources when Harvey Carman died. And these were all very admiring. They did not mention that he killed Joyce Johnson by doing an abortion with her on her with a nutcracker in a motel room. Okay. And when I pointed out that he'd done this, I had documents supporting this. Okay. I had newspaper articles that I linked to that I downloaded from newspapers.com about what the testimony was during Harvey Carman's trial. So when I say he killed Joyce Johnson doing an abortion on her with a nutcracker in a motel room, I didn't just hear that from a pro-lifer, automatically believe it and pass it on. I went on newspapers.com. I went to that period of time and I put in Harvey Carman's name and I found all that information and I collected it. The thing about the Mother's Day massacre, I had multiple, multiple sources for that. Um, and the thing in Bangladesh, I had multiple sources for that. So when I was saying these negative things about Harvey Carman, I don't want pro-lifers to simply believe me because I said it. I provide those links so that you can see I'm not just pulling this out of the hat. I'm not just making it up or farting it out. It's real. It's documented. And we should always do that. It's real. It's documented. And I like it when pro-lifers post entire videos. And a lot of times I see that they are misinterpreting what the person said, such as in that case where she says the baby can't scream because she transects the cord. Um, I was able to point out that the way the pro-lifers were interpreting it was completely wrong, and they're doing it because they want to believe the worst about abortion doctors, and they're primed and ready to believe the absolute worst when the reality is already bad enough, okay? You do not have to make up more bad things about what some of these people do because what they do, you just listen to them verbatim. It's horrible. You know, you, you don't need to believe things that are worse. So I just want you to get that in your mind when you're thinking about what it is these lawmakers are hearing and what it is they're believing. When they hear from us about these late abortions, healthy mother, healthy baby, killing the baby after it's born alive, they are geared up to totally disbelieve that, to just blow it off because, of course, pro-lifers lie. And it doesn't help when we're taking things like that doctor's quote about transecting the umbilical cord and saying she's cutting the vocal cords because she's sadistic and doesn't want the baby to scream while she's torturing it to death. Okay, We discredit anybody who passes along stuff without verifying it is discrediting the entire pro-life movement, and they are feeding into that need that the abortion rights people have to believe that an abortion doctor would never, ever, ever do a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad thing. So whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, whether the information is coming from your side or them, check it, look at their sources. Do they have valid sources for what they're saying? Because unless you have that, you have no idea. And it's totally wrong to immediately trust your side. And it's totally wrong to immediately mistrust the other side. Go to their sources, look at it and interpret for yourself.